Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo. And we're here today with some more Zeus tutorials. Today, I want to show you guys uh, some of the small things that I do when I'm creating a Zeus mission, more specifically, Zeus mission for a smaller number of players. Because normally we play with around four, actually, sometimes even down to three players, all the way up to, you know, 10 or 15. And when you're running those smaller numbers, even like 10, I mean, that's still a relatively small number. 10 down to four people. You have two squads, maybe of four. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things you need to do in order to keep the missions difficult while still being enjoying. You can't just throw more op for on the map because all that does is it makes for more frustrating gameplay for the players down on the ground. Uh, the Zeus AI, as we know, is not very nice. Uh, no matter what you do to tweak it, there are still those moments where you'll get like the 500 meter headshot, the 500 meter just sniper kill with a Katiba with iron sights from an op for unit. It's just something that happens quite often. And also, just in general, increasing the number of enemies to increase the difficulty is kind of a cheap way of solving, you know, a bigger problem, which is how do I make the mission difficult? How do I make it enjoyable? You can't just throw a large number of units at it. There's no reason to do that either because Zeus has so many tools and there's so many small things you can do with Zeus using role-playing elements to create that tension and to increase the difficulty while still remaining what I like to call that just that sweet one-to-one, -one, sort of close to that anyways, uh, 1 to like 1.5 aspect ratio between the actual real world players and the AI that they're facing off against. So a little bit of creativity is required, but once you start to understand some of the things that Zeus can do and also understand some of the things that you can do as a player who can communicate to the people on the ground using role playing elements, there's a lot of stuff you can do with Zeus and you can just in general make much, much more complex, much more interesting and much more difficult missions without, again, just throwing more AI in the map. So one of the first things, of course, is starting off any session of Zeus is picking that initial spawn location. Let's get, well, I guess we'll leave those there. That's something I was gonna do later on and I kind of forgot to delete them, but uh, for this for this situation, Altus is a huge map. If you're playing on Altus, there's a lot here, you know? Switch it up, find different areas of the map, uh, find different elements, you know, pieces of terrain that could make for interesting combat, you know, in in the future of the mission, you know. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is just pick that initial respawn and look what's around it. So I've picked the small little, I guess you could call it a town. It's not really a town. It's like a couple houses and some burnt down shacks of Coroni, though. Uh, nice enough, Coroni isn't actually that far from some of the larger towns like Athera. We have Gravia, even Kaka. Laka, sorry. <laughs> Laka, Neochori, Stavros, and then we actually have, you know, the main airfield here for Altus as well. So we're in a pretty good area. If we go over this way, there's a little bit more desolate terrain, I guess you could say. We have a lot of hills and rocks and some small forest mixed in everywhere. There's a nice bit of variety on this part of the map. And in this case, I'm probably going to spend a lot of the first the first part of the session of Zeus deploying my troops using ground vehicles. I'm going to be giving them a couple cars here and there saying, hey, you can go around. And then maybe later on, I'll have something like transport helicopter come in to take them further over and maybe someplace like Paros or the salt fields, uh, the salt fields, the salt flats, or down maybe to one of the smaller, you know, the corners, the peninsulas, Chakla, wherever it may be, you know, just think ahead when you place down that initial respawn. Don't just slap it somewhere on the map. That's the, that's the first thing you need to do when trying to design an intelligent uh, session of Zeus. So let's go ahead and put down our respawn here. And our blue four respawn. Nope, that's not what I want to do. Okay, there we go. So we have our blue blue four respawn. Now we could just deploy our troops here and call it a day and say, okay, this is their area. Throw a virtual ammo box down if that's something you're running, or throw down a box for them to equip, you know, get some gear out of. But that's kind of you know, eh, you know, that's not really the type of mission I want to design at this point. Maybe if I was doing more of a survival based mission, I said they're stranded uh, in the middle of Altus, they don't know how they got here, then that's cool. But in this case, we do want to make it seem like they are, you know, part of the military. They've been placed here and they have a small outpost. So one of the quick ways you can do this, rather than going and individually grabbing H barriers and all these different elements and trying to stick them on the map, which can take a decent chunk of time, but we can instead actually pull elements from some of these military outposts. So if we go to groups and go to empty, you'll see we have military here, and we have these six different military outposts. So if we go ahead and slap down something like Camp Audacity, now we have this entire, you know, this entire camp. Now we're not going to use that because that's kind of lame in my opinion just to slap this in the middle of nowhere, but what inst I'm, instead I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tear off bits and pieces of this. So. We're going to go like this, and we're going to rip this entire corner off here, and then we're going to go ahead and move it over here. Now what we can do after we get this is we can rotate it, and see right about there, and then we're going to place it just 
inside here so it's sort of attached. Now we don't actually need these barriers right here, so we're gonna go ahead and take these. And we're actually gonna rotate them and slap them right over here. So like sort of, you know, sort of give them a bit of cover here, blocking the entrance. And uh, we can also grab a couple more pieces off of this if we need to do so. Maybe uh, just grab a nice little corner while we're here. You know what, maybe we'll use a shipping container instead. Yeah, a little bit of creativity here. We'll dump a couple shipping containers right in the corner here. And there we go, we got a nice, quick, fast base that also has a lot of small detailed elements in it. The nice thing about these bases is they come with like oil tanks spawn in them, you know, they have some containers. So you can move these around if you want to. Of course, you're more than welcome to just rotate, rotate and remove smaller pieces of the map, maybe. Yeah, we'll put another barricade over here. I don't really want them too exposed. And again, you know, we have another fuel tank over here. There's just some small elements that add a little bit of atmosphere to the base. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and slap down a flag in the middle of it, maybe. Uh, you know, you can put down some light, more light posts if they're running a night a night mission. Maybe you want to actually have this base be lighted. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want it to be a base in the dark. There's a lot of small elements you can throw in then. And it's only taking you a couple minutes. Boom. You got a nice rapid base there. You can go ahead and tell your units to go ahead and spawn in, grab whatever they need out of their virtual ammo box or however they're getting their gear, and you can go ahead and start the mission. Now, we also need to give them a vehicle. In this case, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and deploy a couple, couple of choices of vehicles for them. I'm basically, just going to give them two uh, pickup truck based vehicles. So, we're going to go ahead and put these. Yeah, where does it make sense? We'll put them parked right out back here. So, I'm going to give them two of these Azuzus. Uh, the names of the vehicles are probably going to <laughs> be a little bit different for you guys, but uh, these are under the FIA. They're just like the, I think they're an initially called like the Special Forces vehicles or something like that. But I've given them one of each. Uh, we're going to say that this is only a four-man unit that we're creating this session for. So they're only going to need one of those cars, but it's up to them. Maybe for one mission they might think that the 50 cal is going to be beneficial, and another they might say, hey, we're not even going to fire out of the vehicle. It's too high risk. We're going to take just the normal, the normal sort of truck here and move from there. So that's all said and done. Now we have to go and actually create the mission and then start talking about the small elements that we're going to use to enhance its difficulty to create those extra bits of tension. So we're going to go over to the town of Galati here because I've already chosen this as sort of what's going to be the mainstay for their first mission that I'm going to run here. What I'm going to have them do is run an HVT mission because they're fun, you know? It's a, it's, it's a nice alternative to just going in and murdering everything or going in and blowing something up. Instead, they have to run in and they're actually going to capture this HVT rather than assassinate him. So we're going to make use of the church here. These churches can be found in just about every single town. Uh, the small ones, even the large ones, always tend to have at least one church in it. The people of Altus are very religious, obviously. They have churches everywhere. So we're going to use Nikos this time around. He's probably one of my favorite targets when you talk about making a friendly HVT. Someone that isn't actually on the enemy side. He's been captured. Huh. That's a very interesting thing. <laughs> uh, apparently, I still have the tactical beard mod on, which I never use because it's terrible, and it's applied itself to Nikos for some reason. That's really, really interesting. So, anyhow, uh, we're going to be capturing Nikos with the beard of Abe Lincoln. <laughs> now, what we want to do in this situation is, again, we want to try and maintain that one-to-one -one ratio between the friendly players on the ground and the enemy players that they're going to be encountering, and instead use other elements to increase the difficulty. So, when it comes to deploying any sort of op four forces inside of a town, I like to use the sentries. The sentries are nice because they're they come in pairs, so it's two units that you can basically just make on patrol. You know, they're a patrol sentry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them down there. We're going to go ahead and hit Alt and right mouse. That's going to put them on a rotating patrol. So they're going to go up and down here. Now, in this case, we're going to want to make them relax. We're going to put their speed on low and we're going to put them on standing. We're going to drop their skill all the way down. I'm not actually sure how effective that skill bar is. But again, when you're messing with the default AI and you haven't tweaked it with any modifications, which is kind of what I just want to show you guys here in case you're someone who doesn't run all these fancy mods on your Zeus. Uh, you're going to want to drop that difficulty down. The nice thing about putting them in safe mode, as you can see, is their weapons are at they're, they're at the low now. They've been here for weeks. They're convinced that no one is going to come and attack them. Let's put our weapons down at our side and just go on our patrol, man. We're sick of being here. We're hungry. We're cold. And we're just tired of being in this damn deserted place. So that's, that's how they're feeling. Anyways, now we're actually going to deploy one more sentry over here. And we're going to come back to them and use them a little bit later. Now, in terms of who's protecting the HVT here, we're going to use the officers. So if we go into single, op four, go under men, we'll see the officers down here. The nice thing about the officers, uh, just in general, when you're using them for other situations, is that number one, they don't have night vision on. So maybe if you're running a mission where you're not going to give your team night vision and you really don't feel like going through, clicking 
uh, remote control on each of the individual units and throwing off their glasses, you can use things like the officer here and there, sort of mix it up so they're not facing an entire op four force of night vision wielding opponents, you know, when they're running flashlights or something like that. Now again, you're going to want to go in, set these guys to stand, put their posture on, drop their skill. We're just going to, you know, I've told you guys that it's good to do that. Let's just leave them where they are for now. So there are two officers. They're protecting the HVT. And uh, that's the end of that. But we want to add a little bit of element to this, you know, give our give our guys maybe even a, an optional escape vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and go into empty again. We're going to go to find civilian vehicles. and We're going to drop down a BMW here. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a black one. Just be a little bit more fitting for an HVT to be trans transported in a black SUV. And can we can pretend it's armored. I guess we're going with the white one. No luck. Anyhow, if you can manage to get a black one, you know, just for the little bit of element there. So now we have the vehicle down. You got the units out front. This is sort of their little outpost area. We still need to add some more troops, though, to the town. This definitely is not enough. Well, there's four, four troops here. It's not really that one-to-one -one ratio that we're looking for. We just need to find a little bit more balance, especially this is going to be a stealth mission that I'm going to force our team to run. So we're going to put one more unit. There's going to be a single rifleman, and he's just going to be on patrol walking down the road here. And he's going to wrap around. He's going to come back up. He's going to walk past the front of the building, and then he's going to turn back this way. And now what we're going to do with him is we're going to keep him in a walking pace, but we're going to leave him in combat mode. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, this way, this guy's a little bit more aware, you know, he's like the, he's top tier of his class, he never lets his guard down, six days doesn't matter to him, he's still got his guard up, he's, he's been shot at, he's seen people killed, and he's ready to stay on the ready. So there we go, we got our patrol there, uh, we got our patrol there, what we might do actually as well is we're going to add one more unit kind of hiding out over this way, this guy's going to be our engineer, so we're going to pretend that this guy's over here, where is he? He's working on some crash vehicles, so we're going to put him into a crouching mode, and we're going to deploy an enemy vehicle. So we're going to go to cars, and we're going to put down a 50 cal MRAP. It's completely empty. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to damage this. So we're going to give it really low health. We're going to give it zero fuel. So it's laying there. It's wounded. This guy's, you know, kind of sitting here repairing it. Uh, what we might do in this situation, since it's nighttime, is we'll put like a light post on this guy. The nice thing about putting something down like a 50 cal Ifrit, though, or a 50 cal anything for that matter, is that when the when the friendly players actually go to run recon on this town, which is just an intelligent thing to do, I would hope they would do that, considering they're going in to take out an HVT. They're going to see that, and they're going to see it as immediate threat. It's going to become a concern for them, and that's going to be added to their list of concerns. That, again, is going to allow it to bump up that difficulty without adding a large number of enemy forces. So they're going to be coming in. They're going to recon the town. Number one, they're going to see the patrols. So we have a patrol there. We got, you know, the, the single patrol here. And then they're going to see that guy over there. They're going to see that 50 cal. They don't know he's repairing it. They don't know he's an engineer. To them, it's a, it's a, it's a massive threat. A 50 cal is not something that you want to have to tango with when you're running, you know, suppressors. And, you know, some M4s going in to pick up an HVT. You're, they're not prepared. They don't have rockets. They don't have explosives. It is a threat. And, again, something that small has now increased the difficulty for them tenfold without actually increasing the direct threat to their lives, you know, without giving the opportunity for them to be killed in what might seem like an unfair manner. Now, the last thing we want to do with these guys right here is add a little bit more detail to them. So we're going to go into... Uh, groups going to empty, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to uh, roadblocks. We're going to put down a roadblock right there, and then we're going to move these guys a little bit closer to it. We'll actually put the roadblock up. So again, another just a nice little small element there. Adding these small details to a mission, while it may take a little bit more time when you first start doing it, uh, eventually you'll be able to do it much more rapidly. Uh, maybe, you know, start off the first mission being something a little bit less complex, get them going on that, and then come back and work on it as you're helping them with that mission. But the small details go a long way. One of the last things I like to do when I run any of these small towns is to actually put down some civilian vehicles parked on the road. So we'll say i got a vehicle parked in the corner here. Maybe this back road actually has a, a truck sitting in the way, you know, kind of parked just right in the corner here. And maybe we got another pickup truck right along the road. Right on this corner here, right before we actually get to the uh, location for the HVT. And we'll throw a couple more vehicles along the way. We could have a Honda Civic parked in front of the house here. Maybe we have another one parked right next to this one facing the other way. Two people live here. They're terrible parkers. Who knows? <laughs> we got some, you know, just add a little bit here and there. A little bit of a spice to this uh, rather empty town. 
Now, in this case, you have a couple options in terms of actually allowing the player to know where the HVT is. When I'm doing assassination missions, I usually don't actually like to put down, uh, you know, the neutralized objective. I'd rather just give them a description and say, hey, you know, he's an officer. He's known to wear really expensive glasses. And then make sure that I only have one officer on the ground who is actually wearing aviators. In that case, they'll be able to identify the target and take him out. But in this case, it is a protect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put HVT as the name. And then we're going to say secure the HVT. Now you can put, you know, a bunch of massive stuff down there. This really only shows up if they actually look inside of their tasking. So that's now all said and done. We have our mission created. Now, of course, we need to amp up the difficulty just a little bit more, again, indirectly. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say it's nighttime. We're going to skip time. This uses a 24-hour clock if you're not aware of that. So we're going to go to about 20. It's now dark out. Now here we have this mission. It's been designed. We can tell our friendly forces, okay, you guys are good to go whenever. They're going to tackle it however they see fit. All they know is that, number one, we're going into the town. We need to get an HVT out. We're not sure. It's a smaller number of enemy forces. We know it's not large scale. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going in simply because 4 against 15 doesn't make sense. So the situation makes sense. The mission makes sense. They're going to go in. They're going to attempt to complete it. Now, the last bit of information I'm going to give them as command is really one of the big twists that's going to provide that additional detail. This is a nighttime mission. I've told them to equip their rifles with suppressors. It is also a full-on stealth mission. That means that if any of the enemies engage them or are able to alert their base, they're going to be able to call in hefty reinforcements. This is basically going to make the mission no longer viable viable for them. It's not something that they're going to want to participate in because I'm going to have the enemy forcements come in such large numbers that it's no longer balanced. What you're doing in that case is you're not making the mission intelligent, you know, you're not making the mission <sighs> intentionally unfair. You're actually forcing them to, to consider a retreat or death. Basically, you give them, you've given them two options. They have the very rare chance that they might be able to make it to the HVT, get them in a vehicle and extract before those reinforcements come in. Or they can actually just retreat because it's no longer, it's no longer a mission that they want to take part in. You know, four against 20, uh, is not a balanced mission. So you're kind of giving them another option apart from just completing it. They don't always have to have success as the only end point to the mission. This is great when you don't want to have them just respawning over and over and over. And again, in this situation, I would probably give them one life per player, maybe two, depending if you want to do something like respawn tickets. It's really something that you just kind of have to get a feel for. But again, that just adds that sense of difficulty, and it also gives them another option apart from success. Now, one of the cool things you can do this is something that I just thought of the other night. It was like a, it was a complete just thought in my head, like, hey, why don't I do this? This will add this really nice sense of tension. Is you look, we have this town, right? It's in the middle of nowhere. Everything around it is completely black. And that is kind of the point of sending our team in at night. You know, they're going to be able to infiltrate into the town unseen, crossing over territory that is normally just completely open, where the enemy, if they have any sort of outpost set up, any sort of, uh, you know, reconnaissance being done on the town, the friendlies would be spotted. Luckily, though, it's nighttime, so how do we sort of then throw throw another sort of uh, obstacle in their way? So what I've done here is you can see these red triangles. I've actually placed these on the map and marked them as flare zones. So we have another one here. We'll go ahead and we'll actually put another one down on this side of the town as well. So we have basically all of the big open areas outside of Galati covered by flare zones. So currently the time on the clock is 20, 2017. That is the current time. So what I'm going to tell my team is that uh, we have one more piece of intel. There's been some UAV reconnaissance over the last couple nights over the town of Galati that has discovered that the Op 4 units are actually deploying flares in the open areas around Galati every 15 minutes. So they now know that, hey, we have less than like 12 minutes here to get into that town before flares are deployed outside of Galati, and there's a good chance that we will then be spotted and reinforcements will instantly be called in. So what I've done is I picked a, a amount of time that seems fair. You know, you might have to increase that amount of time depending on how far away your team is. You might have to decrease it, but you want to make it a fair number. And again, that is something that's going to come with practice over time, understanding how long it actually takes for your team to travel a certain distance on foot or on ground vehicles or in the air. But now that I've done that, you know, 
I can go ahead and maybe they do finally run out of time and I say, hey, you know, they really they really were lollygalligan. They crashed their vehicle into a car. They were screwing off. You know, something happened. It's time for them to be sort of, uh, you know, to be we're punished with a little bit more of a difficult scenario. So say they're right here. We got targets right down there on the map and boom, the clock ticks 2030. Their 15 minutes is up. Go ahead and pop those white flares in all those designated areas. And what we would essentially do is if our team actually gets caught in any of these flare zones, we would go ahead and call in those reinforcements. So you see what we did there? We've created a whole nother element of tension, a whole nother element of difficulty without actually adding any, any direct, direct enemy threat. You know, there's not a direct threat here. It's a completely indirect threat. <laughs> I can't understand what I'm saying, but you get what I'm saying here. These are the elements that I've been using inside of Zeus lately to just create these more diverse, these more dynamic missions. And again, using things like enemy patrols is really great because when the town, when the team comes and does a reconnaissance on the town, they don't just have these stationary, you know, threats everywhere. Like, oh, okay, we got two guys standing outside that building, two guys standing outside that side building. No, instead, it's like, okay, we have, there's a group of two on patrol, maybe even throw an HMG or maybe just an Ifrit that's patrolling the town. You can go ahead and do things like that. You can have an Ifrit that leaves the town and comes back 10, 10 15 minutes later. Make use of all of these small role-playing elements to increase the difficulty rather than just throwing a larger number of Op4 units on the ground. So, I hope that helps you guys in designing your Zeus missions, whether it be large-scale or small-scale. All of these elements can be used to, again, have that indirect difficulty increase to your session, you know, just make the game a little bit more fun, a little bit more complex, complex, and a little bit more stressful in the best way possible for the actual players down on the ground. I want to go ahead and apologize in advance if this turned into a bit of a thick and complex <laughs> discussion. There was a lot I wanted to get across and, uh, and try and get it across in as short of amount of time as possible, but if you're somebody who's just looking to get into Zeus, you know, I hope that helps you a little bit. Definitely give it a try, you know, if you're somebody who runs Zeus, just expand your mind a little bit. You know, there are so many tools at your disposal that are directly inside of the game, as well as, again, tools that have nothing to do with the game. They're not available, but they're role-playing elements you can throw in, like that time limit. You know, you can go ahead and just say things like that. The flare zones, you know, those are things that are completely designed by Zeus. They're not things that are actually placed in the game as solid, factual concepts. You know, you just make up stuff. It's all about creativity at the end of the day, Zeus, and uh, really the imagination is sort of the limit with the amount of things you can do inside of Zeus. I'm constantly finding new things that I can do with elements and ways that I can use them that I would have never thought I could have used them in the past. If you guys have any questions about Zeus or about anything you saw in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.